Shopping for an e-bike? We're going to answer your number one question. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and get an e-bike. That's right. Definitely exciting times to have an e-bike. They are super hot right now and game changers. And we wanted to bring you this video because our number one video about e-bike shopping led to a lot of questions that we felt like we can answer. And we want to get right into the number one question. But first of all, we do want to say that Paul has decades of biking experience and at least a few years of e-biking experience. Yeah, I've been riding, oh, easily 30, 30 years, 30 plus years. I've lost track. <laughs> but <laughs> for the last three years, I switched to e-bikes. And, you know, I know some of you say I'm cheating, but, but hey, I'm enjoying it, so what the heck. Right. I mean, e-bikes are so much fun. I also have had an e-bike for three years. Should let you know that we are full-time RVers. We've been on the road for three and a half years and we've become e-bike ambassadors. I mean, people always stop us and ask us questions. So let's get right into it. We have actually a bunch of questions we're gonna answer, but let's talk about that top number one question. Yeah, the question that we get most often is how far can it go? The reason why we get asked that question so often is number one, the manufacturers are overly optimistic. Think about buying a car and they tell you how much gas mileage you're gonna get. So it's often not realistic. And then another thing is that they hide the information. If you go onto the manufacturer's websites, you have to do a little searching to find the what you really need to know to give you a, a true idea of the range of the bike. And what I'm talking about is the size of the battery. That is the key to how far the bike can go. And there's one number in particular that you want to look at, and that is the amp hour rating. Actually, what you need is you need to know what the watt hours are, but you can't know what the watt hours are without knowing what the amp hours are. We should probably do a short answer because this does get complicated, but we don't want you to make a mistake. Now, one of the things we have noticed is that people will buy an e-bike and then get disappointed because it doesn't go far enough. The cliff notes on this are look for a battery with a high amp hour number. And so a big, a big battery, because think of your battery like a gas tank. So a big number is what? Well, I've seen them as high as 20. Our bikes are 19.2. Two. With our batteries, we can go 60, 70 miles mm -hmm. per one charge. And then what is small? Six amp hour. The number one selling e-bike out there right now has a 10.2 or 10.4 amp hour battery. You could comfortably go 20 miles on it at full assist level. Right. So 20 miles may seem like far. If you haven't been on a bike in decades, 20 miles may be enough. If you can bike 10 miles on a traditional bike today, you could go 30 on an e-bike. It's difficult to give you a hard number that, you know, you can go 52 miles on this bike and uh, at 52 miles the, the assist stops. There just are too many variables. Wind, uh, the weight of the rider, how much work the rider wants to do. So that's why it's not an easy answer, but I do want to get more in depth. So if you've got a pen and paper, you might want it now. Really to get an idea of the range, you need to get the watt hours. You do that by multiplying the voltage time amp hours. Our bikes, 52 volt batteries, 19.2 amp hours. So if you multiply those two together, you come up with 998.4. That is the watt hours. We have a 750 watt motor. If you divide 998.4 by 750, you get 1.33. What that tells you is that at maximum output of the motor, you can go an hour and 20 minutes roughly on the full charge with you doing no work at all. It's basically wide open, full throttle. All right, so here are a couple examples of some popular bikes. One is a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery. You do the multiplication that comes to 499.2. It has a 500 watt motor on it. That means you could go at full output for one hour. Another example is one with a 48 volt battery 12.27 amp hours, you do the math, you get 589, but it has a 750 watt motor, so you're not even getting an hour. Now what size motor should you get? I like 
500 watt and above a lot of the higher end bikes you know the bikes made by the big bike companies track specialized they mostly have i think now they're they're going up to 350 watt when they first came out, they were 250 watts. And this is because Europe has limited the motor size to be no more than 250 watts. I think some parts of Canada are like that too. Now the difference is a bigger motor is gonna help get you up hills, steep hills. In fact, I had mm -hmm. a 250 watt motor uh, on an e-bike that I was test riding in Santa Cruz. And if you know those hills up there, the bike just wasn't gonna do it. And I tried as hard as I could and I could not get the bike up the hill. If you're buying an e-mountain bike, you for sure want a bigger motor. The smaller the number on the motor means the more work you're going to do as a rider. Mm -hmm. If you're living in an area like Santa Cruz, San Francisco, you know, there's really got some steep hills, we recommend 500 watt motor or bigger. I like to ride fast. I mean, I the other day when we did our 40 miler, I had to stop for a, a nature break. <laughs> and I just let, I told Liz, just keep going. I'll catch up. I did my business and jumped on the bike. I was a good three quarter mile ahead of them. Yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah, and I was able to close the gap. I just, I turned the assist level up and, and I was riding it. At one point I got to 32 miles an hour. And you don't need to go that fast if you like speed, know that you can get that on a bike. And that is another thing about the size of the motor is gonna help you get that speed. 20 on an e-bike, I mean, that's plenty fast for a lot of people. Um, I feel like 30 is a little fast, a little scary, but if you are someone into speed, you know, there'll be an e-bike. <laughs> There's an e-bike out there for you. Hub drives and mid drives, and you're wondering which one should I get? Well, the rule of thumb is if you're going to do a lot of hills, you want a mid drive. They apply more torque than a hub drive. Now, our bikes right now are both hub drive. You previously had a mid drive. And it was great in the in the hills. There was a, a hill that you rode. Um, I think that thing would have gone up a wall. It, if so, it could have got traction, it could have gone straight up a vertical wall. Yeah. If you're looking for an e mountain bike, you definitely want mid drive. So let's talk about fat tires because that seems to be a big trend right now. And there's some pros and cons that I think you ought to think about before getting a fat tire. I don't understand why somebody would want a fat tire if they're going to run a, ride on paved trails all the time. That is a common mistake. We'll meet somebody to, that gets an e-bike and they just want to use it to and from work and they have a fat tire bike. Well, there's a couple negatives about fat tires. Let's talk about the positives first. They will allow you to go off-road, like you know, you can do some, some trails or some gravel and that kind of thing, or maybe on the beach if they're super fat, but they are heavy and they have rolling resistance. So rolling resistance means that it's you know harder to get going from a stop. Of course, you've got a lot more weight too. And then the other thing is what? Well, they're flat magnets. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got more tire on the ground. So if there's something down there, you know, a nail, a piece of glass, your likelihood of, of um, catching that is, is higher than if you've got a skinnier tire. The fat tires, like you said, I mean, it's more rolling resistance. Um, so you're not going to be able to go as fast, which again, that's, I love to go fast. We have a ride coming up. It's 335 miles and it's all off-road and we're looking forward to having the fat tires. Yeah, we're doing it on fat tire bikes. So we're not knocking fat tire bikes. We just, I don't understand the trend of everybody buying fat tires when they're going to ride on paved trails all the time. One of the big differences between a bike that costs a thousand dollars and a bike that costs two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars are the components hydraulic brakes versus mechanical brakes they might both be disc but one is going to just be a cable you know, pulling the caliper together and the other is going to be juice brakes hydraulic brakes another difference is how the controller on the bike knows how much power to apply and they do this two different ways one is cadence sensors a ring of uh, magnets around the chain ring, the thing that you're turning, that the chain goes around up on the cranks. The other method is a torque sensor. The higher priced bikes will have torque sensors and in our case we have both. We have cadence and torque sensors on our bikes. It just makes the bike smoother. Instead of getting a jerk assist. Yeah. yeah. Well this really brings us into how much to spend on an e-bike. 
and it really depends on how much you think you're going to use it. If you are already riding, you certainly can justify spending more money. If you haven't been on a bike in decades and you don't even remember if you like riding a bike or not, you may not want to invest that much. You may just want to get like a starter e-bike, but you're not going to get the components that Paul just talked about. So it may not be as enjoyable, you know, and like we all say, you get what you pay for. You could try to break that rule, but every time I have, I've paid for it. I've ended up having to sell it for a loss, have, sell whatever I bought cheap for a loss, and then go out and buy the more expensive one. Right, now, if you really are concerned that it might be a five minute wonder and you don't even, aren't even sure if you're gonna use it or just maybe to tool around a neighborhood or campground, there are $300 e-bikes. They, they, to me, don't look very comfortable or fun. Yeah, you decide what you wanna do with it. For us, a 20 mile ride for us is a short ride. Mm -hmm. um, not bragging, it's just the way we ride. The last ride we did was 40. Yeah. And, and I would not wanna do that on, on a cheap e-bike. Well, or a cheap of, bike, period. <laughs> it probably wouldn't go that far. Um, but so typically, um, you know, and prices are changing, but typically to get a quality e-bike, it's going to start at a thousand and you, you know, this, like anything, the sky's the limit. You could spend over $10,000 for an e-bike. When you're shopping for an e-bike, you'll notice that they have the bikes classified as class one, class two, or class three. The class one bike is no throttle and pedal assist that will only assist you up to 20 miles an hour. Now, if you're able to pedal faster than 20 miles an hour, you can certainly get the bike over that, but the motor will stop assisting you at 20. Class two is the same thing, but it adds a throttle. And again, the throttle will cut out at 20 miles an hour. Throttle and pedal assist both will cut out at 20. A class three is a throttle, pedal assist, and you have assist up to 28 miles an hour. Well, we actually recommend throttles. There's two types of throttles. One is a twist throttle like you'd see on a motorcycle and then one's like a thumb throttle. We have heard of people and actually me too has had a problem with the twist throttle. So we don't recommend them because it's easy to twist it while you're walking the bike or getting on or off. So the thumb throttle is a little easier. And let's talk about why we use the thumb throttle. Our style of riding, we, we ride on the streets quite a bit. And um, if you're riding with traffic, I like to get across an intersection as quickly as possible from a stop. And what we'll do is just, we'll just goose the throttle. By the time we've reached the middle of the intersection, I'm off the throttle and pedaling only. Yeah, we're using it to break the weight, even on our 65 pound bikes. I mean, that's a lot more weight than on a traditional bike. So we're just using it to give us a good start. And I highly recommend that if you're doing any street riding so that you stay with the traffic. Yeah, I mean, if you were riding on, on closed bike trails all the time, you probably wouldn't really need a, a throttle ever. Are class one, two, and three legal everywhere? I don't know. You've got to check your state. Well, one thing too is that the signs on bike trails have not caught up to the times. There are lots of bike trails we go on that'll say no motorized vehicles. Well, they're talking mopeds and motorcycles. They are not referring to e-bikes. We've talked to officials and we have found it's totally fine to have an e-bike on that type of trail, but you do need to do your own research so you're not breaking any rules. And while we're talking about that and safety, know that people who are walking on mixed use trails haven't quite, you know, come to the times as, as with e-bikes. You definitely want to go slow when you're around walkers. That is true, and that's on the street too. Let's say you're coming up to an intersection, we're cruising along at 22, 23 miles an hour, somebody looks and sees, oh, it's a bicycle, and they'll pull out in front of you. But You're then, going twice as fast as they figure because their mind yep. is 10 years ago. A lot of the e-bikes out on the market are, you buy them online, you don't go to a bike shop. You certainly can. Bike shops are starting to get e-bikes in more and more, I've noticed. But you can, you can get a better deal if you buy one online. But we're also, you know, pro shopping local. One of the things that I've noticed is you walk into a bike shop, they'll only have all Trek, for example. So you don't get to shop different brands. You could check with your local bike store to see if they'll work on your bike if you get one online. If they won't, you probably don't want to be doing with the, <laughs> dealing with that business in the first place because they're 
too stupid to be in business. Right. They should take you, you know, but it's good to check. They should take you in for any kind of work because they know if they get you in the store, you'll buy accessories, you'll buy a new helmet. Maybe you'll fall in love with the bike they have on the floor. But you do want to make sure that they will do the work on a bike that they haven't sold. We mentioned that we are full-time RVers. We're traveling the country and we actually have another YouTube channel that is just virtual bike rides. It just shows all the wonderful trails we have been on from biking up the going to the Sun Road in Glacier, biking in Moab, just all over the, the country. Trail, the trail of the Coeur d'Alene, one of my favorite bike trails out there. Mm -hmm. If you're in the Idaho area, there's a 70 something, 73, 76, I can't remember the number, mile trail called the Trail of the Coeur d'Alene, and it is just spectacular. And this will give you some great ideas of maybe planning a bike vacation. So do check out our channel and let us know your e-bike shopping questions. We'd love to help.